gon' bring it to the table. Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss talk. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy, ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, 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 my dear, we're all going. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. But if you type Boss Talk Podcast 101 in Google, all our platforms pop up. But if you want to see our visuals, definitely hop over to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe, but you get even more when you become a member, okay? How you become a member under each and every video, including this one in, in the description section, go, there will be a link. Click that link. It takes you through all the process. Thank you in advance, and we love you. Hey, man, what's going on, man? Today, we got a very special guest in here today. She don't really need no introduction, man. She's one of the dopest, one of the coldest female that I've met since I've been doing this podcast. She's family, too. She's been on this show several times. You may have seen her looking beautiful all around the internet because she is a model. She is everything and then some. Taylor, Simone is in the building. What's going on? Hola, my loves. <laughs> How are y'all? Hey, what's going nice on, man? Man, listen, man, we've been waiting on this one. This has been one we've been really anticipating, man, trying to figure out just like, hey, man, like what the hell is Taylor up to? Because she's been busy. Yeah, hey, hey, I've been all over the place, but in a good way. Man, <laughs> you know, I, I just, I get excited. You know, your hustle has always been uh, something that I could appreciate. Like, I remember like coming down there, you know, to the uh to the salon and basically, you know, doing skits and everything. So Do y'all remember the first time? Oh yeah, to yeah, I, did. I was so up. mad. No, cuz I did not want <laughs> to be there. You want to be massaged. <laughs> I, I, I had been and back. Then you got I had been back. And you was you did come back. You got yes, to be no, left. No, I did like, not for yes, no massage. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You I came did it back. Again? Yes, you yeah, did but again. the first time Oh, that was you and somebody else. That wasn't me. No, you came back. You came back twice. Yes, you came back twice. No. The first time though. I you never was like, came I can't back. Y'all lying. I'm upset. What's going on? You was complaining. Then you got up and you said, I like this. Steph, mm -hmm. I think you thinking about when we was in Vegas. Mm -hmm. no, no, you no, came back you twice. You came back twice. Mm -hmm. You came back and got a massage twice. I sent my daughter. I have not been back down there. You, you can massage so many. You trying to get me mixed up with <laughs> all of them. I put, it, I put it on everything. You came back. No way. No Your memory, way. You were just so relaxed. You don't remember. No. Now. You were asleep. You no. were asleep. You were no, knocked no. out. <laughs> You you was in the middle of talking shit and you said I, I, No, I said I said a lot of people down there from Charles to White to Which who I'm, else? I'm cool with all who of them. Who Charles who was and it? Ronnie. It was Ronnie, uh who uh, else? Bubba Dub. Bubba Dub, uh, uh Gutter T V. Gutter T uh Gutter T yeah, Gutter came. <laughs> It was uh, a bunch of them. It's a lot of you sent a lot of people. But to but me. at the end of the day, it, it's, cash, it's all of them. Cash, yeah. It, it's been a bunch of them come down there. They love the hey the treatment, man. The way you guys treat people, make them feel good about coming to Dallas, especially all the towners they come. You know what I mean? Uh, PGF shout, didn't he come? Yeah, I was actually mm -hmm. in Atlanta. And he texted me. He was like, "Why you didn't tell me you was down here?" I See? said, "I was down there for business, and I forgot. I got you next time." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And a lot a of them, you know, ago. I'm still cool with them. Like yeah. I still communicate with them. They'll come to like my events, things that I have. So that's, that's hard, cool. man. Let's get all the way into business. Yeah, Let's just get out the last to the nitty we gritty. Here, we weren't able to get in like a hundred percent, like I wanted to. So I know you're born and raised here in Dallas, right? Triple D, yes. What part of Dallas were you born and raised? In? Pleasant Grove. Pleasant Grove. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sir. Um, with your mom and dad or single parent household, how was that? So, um, I would say um, my mom and my stepdad raised me. My mm -hmm. stepdad, that's that's my daddy, like. I'm his tame monster for life. Like, he's been there since I was six months. Um, my biological dad, y'all know, I met when I was mm -hmm, 27, mm -hmm. and he passed away um, at 30. Right, but wow. I was, I mean, we, it was still impactful. Like, right. my dad still made a, a very big impression on So you was on my 30, life. right? Yes, I was 30. So when I met him, I was 26 going into 27. Right. And then when But as a child, but hold on, I want to go back before you get start getting into your father, though. Because as a child growing up, when you six months you, your stepdad was there, did your mom ever tell you that that was not your father? Girl, my mama didn't tell me till I was eleven. That wasn't my dad. But you know, I was a very, I was a smart kid. So you sort of figured yeah, out. Yeah, I was like, something. hold on, you chocolate, my little sister chocolate. That can't be my dad. And your mama like, not that light. My mom, yeah, my mom's not that. I'm, I was the brightest one in right. my family. I was a little white baby, little white redhead child. Uh -huh. So I'm like. 
the math ain't mathing. You know, I was a right. gifted and talented. So kid. did you ask as a kid? I never asked. Like for a very long time, I assumed that my, that my older sister's dad was my dad because right. he was light skinned So I just never asked. I would just be like, you know, I, I'm not gonna disrupt mm-hmm. nothing. But you know, like my, I think I was 11. My mom was like, well, this is your biological dad. And I was like, what? And then I found out that wasn't my biological dad. Come to so, find- so she told you somebody else was your biological dad? The person she was engaged to, come to find out it wasn't. So hold on. So your stepdad isn't the person that, I mean, at six, so, you, so she left him and moved on to somebody else. So my, my, my stepdad and my mom got divorced okay. when I was like 11. She started okay. dating this guy. The okay. guy that she started dating she was She said the that person, that was your yeah, dad. That was the person she was engaged to. Okay. But it turned out when I was 26 and I met my biological dad, it turned out he wasn't my dad. She thought he was my dad. Oh, so she and didn't know. Yeah, she didn't know. So when, I, when my biological dad found me on Facebook, he was like, I'm your dad. And I was so like, So how did he know that? I guess the crazy part is, is he was kind of watching me for like two years. And then like his mom, she lived uh, literally walking distance from where I grew up in Pleasant Grove, where I learned how to drive and all that other stuff. Like I would literally drive on her street. I used to go to Blinton all the time and be at the park or the pool mm-hmm. or the wreck. And um, he, I, I think one, I think what he told me was his best friend, her daughter was my best friend mm-hmm. in high school. And I think one day either I was around them or he seen a picture of us and he was just like, who daughter is that? And that's when my mom came into play, like conversations about my mom came into play. And he knew that he messed with her. Yeah, and he knew. Well, they dated in high school and I guess they rekindled. You you know, you know how they did. But why didn't she ever think that that could have been his? I don't know. Maybe she thought because I looked like. You know the guy, but you look like your, you look like your daddy. Yeah, but I mean, if you're not side by side, mm-hmm. you will never really know. So, like, okay. I guess she kind of just thought like this. But the crazy part is, is like my sister, me and my sister was having a conversation one day, and I really believe like when you belong somewhere, you belong somewhere. You gonna feel it. And I used to tell my sister, I can't belong to this family. This family, I cannot belong to this family. Like. It's just too much stuff going on that I just don't feel like I'm connected. Mm -hmm. And like me and my sister were talking. She was like, yeah, mom used to date this guy. And um, she was like, his name was Zach. Like she used to date this guy. And I swear you look just like him. But, you know, out of of nowhere, he just wasn't around anymore. And I just, you know, but Mm -hmm. you look like him. A couple of years later, he pops up and I go to my sister. I said, what'd you say that man's name was? And she was like, Zach. This man's name is Zach. Portia, this man's name is the name that you told me. He got sandy red hair mm-hmm. and his baby picture looked like my baby picture. So what are y'all hiding? So so did you ever take up a, um, a test? To yeah, we took, make a, sure? we took a paternity test because I had told him, I was like, I'm not your daughter until it's proven. Right. And it came out, I was his. Wow. How did that make you feel like to find that out after all this time? Um... I, I was real mad at both of my parents. For I remember. Really I remember. I was pissed. I was like, y'all, because what happened was, what I think happened was, is that by the time it came to fruition that I could possibly be his, they already had two separate lives. They already had their own things going on, so they didn't want to disrupt their lives. So they figured it was okay to disrupt mine's because I wasn't old enough to understand. Mm-hmm. And so for a long time, I was mad because I was like, Y'all took the the option, like the choice away from me. Like y'all took my identity away from me because for a very long time growing up, I struggled with my identity because I was like, where do, where do I belong? Because I didn't feel like I belonged to the guy that I thought that was my dad. Well, like we we literally beefed all the time. Like I just did not like him. Why did it ha- Why did it matter though? Why couldn't you just create your own identity and just keep it pushing? Because I feel like it's important to know where your roots come from, and. When I met him and we started to have conversations and I started to hear about everything that he did, I was like, dang, you do everything that I do without me even knowing you. So that means it's it's like we're connected regardless. You know what Mm -hmm, I'm saying? mm -hmm. So like I'm really big on understanding where my roots come from, understanding why I do things certain certain ways, why I'm trying to change certain things, how to change generational curses and things like that. And you won't know that until you understand where you come from. Like mm-hmm. my family, my dad derives from black wall street. Like my great, great grandpa father was a dentist during that time. And so it's just like, that means a lot to me. Cause it's like, okay, I knew growing up, I was supposed to do something in business. I knew I wasn't supposed to work for nobody. Cause I would quit every job. 
I would hustle and make money. I was literally known as, okay, she going to quit this job today, but she going to have another job in three days mm-hmm. because that was me. Or I'm a hustle and I'm going to figure out how to get it. And I always knew I would literally have breakdowns. Like, I'm not supposed to do this. I used to. But see, like, me the entire time, I just knew. I was like, I'm supposed to create my own, my own, you know, world, my own income, my own. I'm supposed to make a different impact. Mm-hmm. So when I met my biological father, literally all the pieces just started to come together unknowingly. And I started to understand my roots. I started to understand why my mind thinks the way that it is, why I am the way that I am, why I move the way that I move. And it just... It clicked for me, and I would say, like, from meeting him to now, it has been crazy for me. And he would tell me, he was like, "Ground five years straight, you never have to work another day in your life. And the five years literally probably started six months after I met him. It started in 2019. I met him, like, 2018. Mm -hmm. I want to say, no, no. I met him February 2019, and um, five years is actually this year for me mm. and i'll be 33 so it's my jesus year so wow wow mm. man it's just good to have you on the show man have you back on the show you are um, one of the highlights for me like i said since i've been podcasting and just to see you and developing business and the way you run around and always moving and shaking it's motivation you know uh, thank so you. thank you you know um you you when you first came on here you you came uh, the name of the salon was Touching Skin. Mm-hmm. We're going to get into that. Before we get into that, I want to touch back something in, in, in her past, though. Um, so growing up with um, your mom changing multiple husbands, you know, and ha- and seeing all of that, did that affect your life um, because um, in being a female in that way? Well, seeing I didn't grow them. up. So I didn't grow up with my mom, like, having different men around me. Mm -hmm. So my stepdad was the prime figure in my life. And so that was something, like, even my mom and my stepdad, they're best friends to this day. And I kind of, like, idolize that because I don't feel like if you, if if a relationship doesn't work, you shouldn't have to be sworn enemies. So I, I appreciated that and them allowing us to see that. Now, when she did speak, like, get back with the guy that she thought was my dad, Mm -hmm. I think it was more so just trying to, what is, you know what I'm saying? Like, if if something happened and you break up with somebody and then you kind of just end and don't even talk it out, then sometimes you wonder, like, what if, what could happen? Like, this is, she thought I was his daughter, so why not try? Mm -hmm. You know, why not try to see if we could be a family? I, I wish you wouldn't have made that choice, but I mean, I understand. So it didn't really affect me. One thing it made me look at for my own life is that I don't want my children to ever grow up and feel like, dang, I can't go see my dad or I, I want to go be with my dad or my parents don't get along or things like that. I wanted them to always grow up in kind of like a open communication, stable environment. Like me, I live downtown, but I drive to Carrollton every, right. every day to take my kids to school. But they've been in the same district since they were three. Right. So they've grown up with the same friends. My son literally goes, my youngest son goes to school with teachers that knew him as a baby. Mm-hmm. And now he is in the fourth grade. See, the reason why I asked you that, because I know that when, you know, some children or some kids, when they go through, um, when the parents go through different relationships like that, sometimes molestation and all of that come into play. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why I was asking. I didn't know if you've ever experienced any of, you know, molestation and all of that as a child growing up. Never experienced. My mom, she she made sure that we were taken care of. We were protected. Like, she had one boyfriend that me and my sister didn't like, but we terrorized the hell out that nigga. Like, for real, for real. Like, we would... It, it, no mercy but um by the How time many siblings he, um well on my mom's side i have two sisters and then i have a stepbrother okay so um on my dad's side i have uh four other sisters we shouldn't mm-hmm. talk about them <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah like we we didn't have to go through that and by the time she dated this one dude that we didn't like i was well i was like 17 by this mm-hmm. time and my little sister was like 15 so it wasn't really too much that we 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 were cognitive enough to kind of know certain things and be like bro don't talk to me like that like oh i'm gonna call my daddy type stuff so it was we had to go through too much so um okay so moving forward Mm -hmm. um now running your business your first business that you went into was touching skin back then yeah okay so the first business actually was real estate i started wholesaling 
Okay. That's that was the real first business, and I made a good chunk of change on wholesaling. And then I went into um, touching skin. Mm-hmm. Touching skin was a spot. So I've been a licensed esthetician for going on ten years now. So at okay. the time that we opened it, I think I was like right at five. Mm-hmm. And so um, it was really just something that took off by accident. It it really took off by accident. It went from one room to two rooms. To no one room to three rooms to seven rooms. But you had a passion for it. You loved it. Yeah, I, I absolutely loved it. I love talking to people. I love telling them about their skin, telling them about self preservation, taking care mm-hmm. of themselves. I loved everything about that. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't hard to grow it because I made sure that I was in the right rooms with the right people, and you know. But how do one make sure that they're in the right room, the right people? Because you have people out here try to start businesses and stuff like that, but how do they get into those rooms? Where do they go to meet the right people to get into those rooms? I feel like when you are showing up as your authentic self, you're gonna automatically be put in rooms and those people are gonna be drawn to you regardless. So when you go into a networking event and you're trying to be something that you're not, people going they going they going to smell the bullshit. But when you show up and you like, "Look, this is what I do. I want to learn. I'm not where I want to be yet, but this is important to me." People are going to automatically draw, be drawn to you and be like, "You know what? I want to help you. I like your passion. I like your hustle. I like this and that." So for me, that I, I always tell people like, "Don't show up as somebody you got to remember." Because if you got to remember them, then you're not going to know what to do the next time you encounter that person again. They're going to be like, but you told me this. Mm-hmm. Oh, but you acted like that. So I was like, just be you. So, so when you were growing Touching Skin, it was very important for you to be, to go to uh, mixers and networking yes. events. Yes. So running a business, you have to do that to be successful? Yes. Well, yes. You have to. You have to put yourself in front of a, a, a diverse crowd. Okay. You have to put yourself in front of people that are just like you, as well as people that are doing better than you, as well as people that are doing good, but they've hit a stump. Mm-hmm. You have to make sure that you are around all type of people so that you can learn a, like a full circle of things when it comes to business. And that's what I did. I would go to, you know, mixers for real estate to talk to people and be like, hey, you could offer this to your clients who close on a the house. Mm-hmm. They can come and you can get a, a, a massage and a facial for them as a gift. I will find ways to include myself into mm-hmm. what they had going on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you have to find your way to make make people feel like you are worth the risk. Mm-hmm. And that's what I would do. I would be at all type of events. We literally did an event for um, every year. The firefighters have like a bike riding event where they ride across the country. Somehow, some way we talked to somebody that was like, hey, we want y'all to come out and massage the firefighters. Mm-hmm. It was a completely free ordeal that we that we took on. We didn't ask for them to pay, but we ended up making like $600 because they were tipping us. Mm-hmm. And we had a really good time. And those people still recommend um, people, the people to too. come to us now. Right. So so back to Touching Skin. So when you were doing Touching Skin, you had a partner. Mm-hmm. And who was the partner? Voldemort. <laughs> Your partner, because you were on an, this interview yeah. at Boss Talk Podcast One On One with Salima, mm-hmm, which was your podcast, which was your partner, yep. right? Mm-hmm. And um, how long were you in business with her for? Um, we were in business together. I, I want to say like two and a half years. We were friends for maybe five years, four or five years before that. Before that, okay. And then we went into business. We opened Touch and Skin. She was my business partner, maybe like she did whole she did the wholesaling with me too. Right. Um, so we were in business together maybe two and a half years. No mm-hmm. more than like three years. Okay. And um sadly it split, it broke up. Mm-hmm. Sure and did. um y'all are talking terms or I, I don't even know who we're talking about right now. Okay, not talking terms. Yeah, not so, at all. in okay, with all your experience. Um, because I'm sure, cause I always look for the positive and negative mm-hmm. cause there's a reason why y'all end up together and opening the business. What was the positive side of running the business with her in the first place? I think the positive side of running the business was that, um, I wasn't having to figure it out alone. Mm-hmm. That was the positive side. Like, like our friendship was truly beautiful mm-hmm. before we kind of hit the stump. Like right. we were both going through the same struggles. We were both enduring the same things. And so I really had somebody that I could go to and talk to and be like, okay, this is what we're going through, but how do we get over it? So two heads are always better than one. Right. So that was the positive side. 
the negative side I would say was, you know, when you go into business with somebody, y'all got to be on the same page. Meaning, it has to be about the purpose and not about the money. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so you have to make sure that you analyze all aspects of that person because as you grow, things are going to get difficult. And money truly can be the root of all evil if you don't have a solid foundation. So I feel like the negative was that we both had two completely different goals and we didn't know how to merge them together. Right. So wow. that's crazy. Let, let me let me hear how, what would you do if you could if, if if you didn't knew what you knew now going into that situation, what would you have done different? Um, I probably wouldn't have done anything different. The only thing different I probably would have did was got an attorney and made sure that we settled the payout with a lawyer Mm -hmm. and not a dissolution for her because in the end I felt like you know I lost more because I dealt with everybody saying well I think you can do it like everybody knows you like you have the you have the background you have the power like you have the image like it's gonna be easy for you like you can start over yeah like a lot of people because ultimately I was just like fuck it like if we're not gonna do it together we're not gonna do it at all like, I'm, I don't care about this. Like, if we're not going to do it together, you're going to lose and I'm going to lose too. That was ultimately my mind. Like, I'm not going to pay you out this money and you be able to do whatever you want. No, we, we fin- everything is going. But then I dealt with a lot of people just, I would say people hyped me up mm-hmm. and was like, you this, you that, like, you got it. Like, you, you know how to talk to people. You know how you got the personality. You got the, everybody know you as touching skin anyways. And I wouldn't say they hyped me up. I would just say, they kind of pulled me out of a box that I didn't know that I was in. How hard was it um, picking that business up where it stood when she walked away like that and moving forward, you know, and going through those times where you had to be that person to be the, not only yourself, but the part that she played in the business? It was hard. It's still hard. I'm still getting things together. And I just told somebody the other day, I was like, they have all these seminars for businesses, all these seminars for networking and how to grow your business and financing. But I ain't never went to a, 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 a workshop on how to overcome losing a business partner. Like some of the trials and tribulations that you go through, some of the negative annotations you have to get rid of. Because a lot of people looked at, they were like, a lot of people thought I was the bully. Mm-hmm. because I had a bolder appearance personality. and personality. So a lot of people were asking me, well, what did you do to her? Did, why did you bully her out the business? I was like, I ain't bully no grown ass woman that's older than me. I know business. Like I didn't do that. Like she made the choice to leave. And yeah. I, y'all had a great chemistry, man. I ain't gonna lie, man. She, you and her together. That was a great time for me. Uh, everybody says it. Everybody know y'all, you, whether you guys knew it or not, it was a special thing. The way that you know the yin and the yang, and and to be real with you, you it was some good times in there, and I knew that during that time. Yeah, of course, y'all hit a roadblock and and you know bust a tire or wrecked a car and totaled it out or whatever. But at the end of the day, there was some good times in that for me. And see, I don't negate that. Like we had really good times, but one thing that I will say is that sometimes when you have certain people around you, they will talk you into looking at the reality in a in a skewed way. You know what I'm saying? So you have to be careful who you keep around you. And I felt like that was that's what happened. Now, granted, I talk shit. I have a very bold personality. And sometimes I can be a little bratty. But if I love you and you my friend and we like, you can sit down and talk to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's not difficult. But when you got other people in your ear, like, the biggest thing that I felt was she had other people in her ear. I feel like she had people that was like, well, you can do this. Like, you can be you can be that and you can do this. And I'm like, nigga, we could do that together. Like, why not do it together? And I felt like it got to a point to where she was just like, I want to do it myself. Like, I want to see how I can grow myself. And by the time, I mean, it hurt when she walked away. Did you like, try to talk off the ledge? I did try to talk off the ledge. We actually had a meeting. And then a week or two later, she was just like, I just want to go on and do it by myself and then I started to it wasn't until she left I started to see you were planning this before you even had a conversation and then we had a shady mentor like he he wasn't no good he was a shady mentor he was so did, I get from that that he remained friends with her and you and him kind of stopped talking so he remained see, that's, friends. that's how that's how it coming off to now, me right there now he remained friends with both of us oh okay but the thing that happened was I was always the one putting my foot down so even when he would mentor us, I was like, 
That don't sound right. Like, why is you in our facility hitting on our employees? Move. But so you are, are you so you and him are not friends any longer? Nah, mm -mm, I got rid of him. What happened? I mean, so he was your mentor. Yes, he was our mentor, but and, he was and, also a, a shady mentor. Yeah, but as he mentored you, what did you? I mean, how did how did what did you get from it? What did you learn a lot from it? Okay, so I did learn quite a bit. I'm not gonna take that away from him. I learned quite a bit, but I also learned that his way of mentoring it had a lot to do with mass manipulation. So as long as he was able to dangle certain things in front of you or give you a, a, a certain reality that he could help you achieve and kind of hold you by your neck, that was the only way you were going to achieve it. He couldn't do that with me. But how how do you hold someone by? I have I give have, an example because I have okay. a mentor, right? So this is an example. So okay. he had I don't know if it was his girlfriend or what he was doing. If he was tricking on the girl, I don't know. He had her working in the shop. And oh, so, that's what I'm saying. I had a mentor. Mm hmm. But it, mentorship doesn't mean you come to my business. I look at the business you've established. Hold on. And my mentor has passed away now. But the guy that I looked up to, he probably didn't even never know that he was my mentor. Mm -hmm. Because I never told him that. But we would have discussions. Or he would talk to me. But I never, I never... I just looked up to the things that he had accomplished, but I couldn't understand, you know, some I would ask him and he would tell me, he would share information with me. But as far as that go, now you guys are going a little step further for me. And like an advisor. He's in the business with you. Right. So that's not, a, that's not, that's not well, a way so to go down. The best way we can call him is, is an advisor then, not yeah. a mentor. What you think? Like, in the beginning, I looked at him as a mentor and then he became an advisor for our company. But the way that he was advising was not beneficial. Was he getting paid by your company? He ended up getting paid. So we started to pay him like a thousand dollars a month. Um, maybe like the last six months before we, we mm -hmm. actually separated. But what ended up happening was. Wait, what'd you pay him for? His advisor on the company. Yeah. So he was a consultant. Right, right. Well, at, in the beginning, he started out as like a mentor. Then he transitioned over, I guess you could say, into a consultant or an yeah, advisor. He's a scam artist. Thank you. He is. His last name was Crook, too. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. Anyways, but um, literally, um, he had somebody. I, I don't I, I wouldn't say he Working would tell there. us that mm -hmm. he was talking to the girl. Like mm -hmm. he was literally like trying to i guess take care of her like some sugar daddy stuff because he wasn't that attractive neither but um he had her working in the shop and he was being real disrespectful to her like when i say super disrespectful like she would show me some of the things he was saying he would talk to her stupid like all kind of stuff and one day i was captain save a you're not finna talk to my employee like that do that shit at home you're not doing that here what do you say he, he tried to come back at me, and I was like, look, you got one or two options. You could shut up because I pay you. You're on my payroll. That's your employee. Or, yeah, you my employee at this point. Or you can bounce. Dude. How you old was this beer. guy? At least 50 something. Acting like that? Yes, yeah, like a whole I don't want to know his name, bitch. but... but I already but, gave you the last name. Re I don't want his name. <laughs> Rewind it, the last name I gave it to y'all. But um, So he's in Dallas? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... and, and, and and I guess, you know, the one thing I can say is, man, did you... The did, crazy part is that did my Did you lose homework, money out of it? I did. I did. Ow. Like, okay, so my accountant was tied to him. Like, money was taken out of my tied account. Tied to him how he hired your accountant. Yes, he hired my accountant, which is why I ended up, like, when I bought out my business partner, I had to throw so much money into changing accountants marketing material finances like I, I mean not finances um like like who did my finances mm -hmm. tax stuff i had to throw so much money into that because he was so heavily tied into it he was able like still to this day for my llc i still have problems with trying to do certain things because on my credit it had my first name and her last name mm. and i'm like what the hell wow. so him like it, it it was a lot it was a lot so when i um Gave him his options. I was like, you can either shut the fuck up and get your money and mind your business because this is my business. You're only supposed to advise it. You're not in it. Stay, stay in your lane. So I'm telling you, you don't talk to my employees like that while they're on the clock. Do this shit at home. He decided he was going he was gonna to quit. Deuces, I'm not going to chase you. The only, the only people I chase, they're dead. So mm -hmm. money. I'm not chasing you. Like, for what? I can find a whole new person. Wow, that's, that's that's I hate I hate that you went through all of that and and so I don't I, because no I learned a lot that's right. what I'm saying no, no, I, don't, I, I don't I don't hate but, that but, I went through anything I yeah, learned a lot I get it I get it but but at the end of the day 
It's a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I, I remember you going through that. I remember all the times you going through emotional, you know, pretty much times where it could have it could have very much took you out, but you stood strong. Yeah, I was ready to fight. <laughs> but what I hear a lot, even with the situation that you went through, because you would say that, you know, people would tell you this, you know, you can do this on your own, you can do that, whatever, is that a lot of times in life, we look to other people to, to help us. Validation. Validation and stuff like that, but you really don't need that. All you need, you know what you can do. You, and validation from other people sometimes can either pull you down or pull you up. But if you're always a person that always need other people to help you and tell you, not financially, but just mentally get in your head, I don't think that's a good thing either. See, and I think at that time, though, I didn't know I didn't need that because everything that I had did to that point was with somebody. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like everything that was built was with somebody. So I went through a transition of I need to make everybody forget about her. That's literally how Taylor Simone came about. I was like, Taylor. I was literally sitting there with my son. My son was like, Mom, your middle name's Simone. Like, the T and the S. Like, it's the same. I was like, you are my child. You smart as fuck, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, like, that's literally how my name came about. Because in my head, I said, y'all think I'm the bully. I'm not the bully. Like, I wanted my friendship. Like, I wanted. There was a way we could have still been able to be friends and dissolute the, like, not be business partners. But right. that's not what happened. So, for me, it was just, like, make them forget about her. And I think I accomplished it. Wow. I I mean, definitely love the way the, since I've been going down there, even when you was by yourself, it looked like the business thrived even more as far as appearance go. Mm -hmm. It seems like you did a lot of different things, reconstructed, reevaluated, and moved forward. And, and I commend you for that. You know what I mean? Um, so Y'all the now, first people I'm talking about this on, for real. Yeah, I just want to Well, well at the end of the day, I mean, why not? But I, mean, I don't care. I want all the smoke. Well, you I, I really this is healing. This I is really therapeutic. don't think it's a smoke thing. No, I think I'm just when you when you sit down with the right people, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. When you sit down with somebody who really like, like I love Lima. I ain't gonna lie to you. She good people too. We took mm -hmm. her out just like we just took you out last night. Not the same way, but with, <laughs> with a different I was source. About to make a comment. But no, we can't make comments. But at the end of the day, we took you out. We take her out. You know, we 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 love y'all, man. And and like I said, you. You stood strong. You you stayed at the business, and I think that's that's something that kind of connects us in a different way because we we already were coming right. down. And there. she moved on to do her own business as well. Mm -hmm. um, two totally different kind of businesses. You Almost know. the same name. What really? Hmm? I don't. Remember I thought you switched you, the old name. The old name. That, is that why you switched the name? One of the big yeah. One of the biggest reasons why I switched the name is because I was like I didn't want the negative tied to it anymore. So the original name was Touching Skin. The new name is T and, T and S, S Med, Med Spa. T and S Med Spa. Tranquility, Nirvana, and Serenity, <coughs> which means like total, um, total peace, like eternal peace. That's what wow. all three of those words mean together: eternal peace. And, and, and then med spa so I'm moving more into the medical field but so you had to you go hold on hold on just a second so you had to go get a different uh, DBA different stuff and just redo every single thing just to get that in there start over start over I don't want to be attached to anything that had any type of negativity towards it any type of you know bad comments or personas and I hate it when I would literally this is a funny story so I was at an event I was talking to a photographer and mind you, this photographer knows me like he knows me. So he was like, yeah, there's this girl like I really think that y'all should do business together because she is like so dope. and She's a massage therapist. Her name is uh, she she goes by like Lima Lim. I just busted out laughing. He was like, what did I say? Funny. I said, Russ, what? What? As I long he didn't know as, you I said, as well. long as you've known me, but he knew us together. He'd seen us together. Like okay. that was how he met. I said, as long as you've known me, he's like, Taylor, what did I say? I said, do you not know I used to have a business partner? He was like, yeah, I, I knew you had a business partner. Like, I don't know what happened, but I said, the girl you named was my business partner. He said, oh, I said, yeah. So like the reason I did the name change was because I wanted to get away from stuff like that. It would be people that would be like, um, we, we did a class together. We literally had to do a whole I remember class that. together. I remember that. So people came up to me, they was like, touched, touching skin. 
y'all know each other no i don't know her stop talking to me <laughs> like it would it would get annoying because it's like i'm having to explain things that i didn't want to explain i'm having to bring up com like talk about conversation have conversations that i didn't want to have and it was like people were always having these conversations with me because they felt like they could talk to me about it and now they thinking I'm mean because I'm like, get out of my face. I don't want to talk about this. It ain't mm -hmm. none of your business. Stop talking to me. But your spa was a um, celebrity spa at first. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't having nothing to do with the medical side. And then once he split, she started doing, she was doing more of like medical um, massages and stuff like that, that therapy. Well, we still did medical things. So we mm -hmm. still like work with doctors, post-op and all that other stuff. Okay. It just, our name wasn't advertised like that, but we okay. still did those services. That's what I was wondering because I know when she moved on, she, that's, that's was mainly her focus to deal mm -hmm. with just that side. So when you switched it to be like med spa, that's why I was wondering like, yeah, it's, so I switched it to do more like laser services, tattoo removal, um, Botox, those okay. type of things. So we added the actual medical services onto mm. it. Um, but we were already doing those services like lymphatic massages, body contour. I remember that. We were already doing those services. It just wasn't advertised in the name. Okay, cool. So moving forward, so it's now, as I said, TNS Medical, no, Med, Med Spa. spa. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how is the business going? It's going good. I mean, things are a little slow, but I mean, it always picks up. I, yeah. I mean, we're going through a recession right now, so everything is pretty much slow. Mm -hmm. Like, funds are slow for most individuals, but um, it's good. Like, everything it's we're still a celebrity spa mm -hmm. i mean the celebrities be on the line baby and you but, have two locations too when i said two locations didn't you have another section um yes, another business bar. yeah the beauty part mm -hmm. um that you have beauty um like stylist nail mm -hmm. person in there too so i have a makeup artist right. i have a loctician a braider uh there's two uh cosmetologists in there um there used to be a lash tech she's not in there in there anymore so any lash techs if you need a space <laughs> Come see me. Um, yeah. So and they're all in the same location. What's the I have address? I have a barber in there too. Uh, 1409 Botham Jean Boulevard. Uh, okay. 245 and 215. There's two different suites. But, mm -hmm, but they're okay. right across the hall from each other. Okay, that's dope. Any more additions later on? Because I know you're always looking to expand. Yeah, so I have a, a big project going on right now to okay. actually become a part of the facility that I'm at. So I'm excited about that. What you mean? Elaborate. <laughs> I can't tell y'all just yet, but okay. I I'm always doing something. I'm always scaling. Mm -hmm. Like um, my my goal is to open up a school by the end of the year. Um, I'm looking for investors to assist me with a like a mobile project that I'm working on, like a mobile RV project. Um, and I already have like all my plans and stuff together. Literally, I have everything laid out to make TNS a brick and mortar, a travel company, and then an educational portion. It's just, um, it takes time. Like when you're a one man, one woman show, you have to do things in steps. And then I also have my life and my kids' life. Right. So I'm just taking things like day by day. Would you ever life. go in partnership again? I'm actually talking about that with someone now. Really? Yeah. I would think after what happened that you'd be like, never again. So, okay. So the thing is, is that I have a different outlook on it. Like, I know the different stipulations, like the thing, the conversations we need to have, uh, the protocols need to be put in place, different contracts need to be put in place. You can't go into business with somebody based on a friendship. And I'm learning that I don't wanna own 100% of anything because if I'm able to own a percentage of something and it, it still make me money, then I'm good with that. Cause I can be a part of 15 different things and owe 10% of 15 different things and still make over $20,000 a month and only have to mem minimally invest my time and my knowledge into that. Mm -hmm. As long as I put the people in place to run it so that it functions the way that it's supposed to, then we're good to go. Mm. Okay. Well, I just, like I said, you you definitely um, a business guru. Yes. Top the, the millennial guru. prodigy. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Tell them some changing the visual aspects of what hey, a millennial mogul consists hey. of. Let them know it a little bit. You know, because I, I teach that too. Well, let me just ask you this. You know, being, you know, you're a very attractive woman. Ooh. I mean, you know, like like to be, you know, you see all the things going on in the news. You know, Cassie just went through a lot. Her and P. Diddy, they, you know, Can't nobody crazy. look bad without me. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, you know, I know you're thugging it. You're from the Grove. I get yeah, it. Nobody look bad without me. They feel money by everything. Yeah, but I just, I mean, do you I feel like... Weird. 
you single, right? I am. But do you feel like 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 being a beautiful woman like you are? Do you feel like you intimidate uh, some of the, these guys? Hell yeah. yeah. You know, like like is it I hard? I mean, you are you a successful businesswoman. Yeah. And now you got guys who have to step the game up to even approach you. Yeah. So how do you deal with that? Um, there's a saying, like Lotto has a song uh, with Queen Naja, and it's she says, an independent, a independent chick is an insecure nigga's trigger. And I learned a long time ago that the more independent I am, the more outspoken I am, it can either make me or break me when it comes to people approaching me or people, you know, trying to pursue me. So one thing that I did learn is that the men of some type of stature, like with a certain amount of money, certain amount of like visibility in the community, they wanted to control me. And they wanted to, I, I was supposed to sit down and shut up. Didn't happen. The men who were up and coming or those type of things, they kind of went with the punches, but then they would be really, really insecure about certain things. Mm -hmm. So I think right now, um, because I'm newly fully single, I think right now I'm kind of just learning how to not date, because I don't be dating, but I'm learning like what I like and what I don't like. Mm -hmm. And I'm creating my boundaries. I don't think, you know, I've had boundaries. So now being where I'm at in business, the way that I am moving, how I move and around the people that I'm around, I'm creating boundaries and a lot of men don't like that. Well, I, let me let me just say this, you know, being a, a mother of two children, you know, and then um, then dating, trying to figure it all out, you know, I don't even be trying to date work life just, balance, all that good stuff. What is that? That's good. Though. I'm just saying, what do you, how do you, how do you, do you want to ever get married? Um, like get married again? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I think, and I literally just had this conversation with somebody else. I think that I'm really scared of a relationship because, you know, I was in a relationship for a very long time and granted, I, I still love my my it's hard to say ex-husband so i still love my ex-husband that's my best friend i talk to him all the time but i think that i'm just scared of a relationship so i don't really give it my all i don't even really be paying attention to these people that be falling at my feet because when they be falling i'll be like get your ass up get up like why'd you <laughs> get up but um I don't know, honestly. I don't even put my energy and my time into that. I just feel like anybody that is for me or supposed to be with me or be in my circle or supposed to have my time is going to organically happen. They're not going to have to force it. I'm not going to feel like somebody's trying to change me. I'm not going to feel like somebody is jealous of me or anything like that because I know the people that I've tried to talk to, I've gotten into a, I would say maybe this is a defense mechanism. I'll just bring them into my world. So I'll be like, okay, we're finna go to this event. You wanna come with me? Like, and we'll go, and we won't go to the event like as a couple. We'll go to the event like we cool. Like, mm -hmm. I just want you to see, like, that my you environment. Always need, right. Yeah, I want you to see how people interact with me, like how people perceive me. How, like, I want you to. And that see could it. be good, and that could be to me in my head. Um, that could be good because then if it's somebody who especially could be a prospective um, partner, um, because. Being the person that you are and dealing with all the people you are, some men can be jealous seeing yes. the interactions that you are doing with other men or women. Yes. You know, so that's like a trial basis to see how they respond when they see you with certain people. Mm -hmm. And if they get jealous, blah, 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 then you know that, uh, I don't know if I want to take the next exactly. step. Exactly. And that's a, that's exactly how I do it because I, I somebody asked me the other day, they was like, you know a lot of people. Like, why you don't ever say who you know? I said, for what? Like, why y'all need to know who I know? Like why it's it's why mm -hmm. I don't have to post it. I don't have right. to tell. like just know that I know these people. And I was like, but then again, like when talking to somebody, I don't want to have to tell them like, yeah, you know, people be on my ass like and I don't be paying on no mind because then it comes off like I'm bragging right. or it comes off like I'm being cocky. And mm -hmm. that's just not me. So sometimes I just feel like let me show you instead of telling you so that, you know, this is what what comes with me and it's not something that I choose for it to come with me. It's just a part of the environment 
that I'm in. You know what I'm saying? But because something you said earlier, you said that um, the more successful you are is the more outspoken you are. Yes. And the more independent you are. But then some people or some men can feel like, okay, do you do you know how to still be humble um, or, or um, submissive where men are concerned? Because sometimes some women can get so successful, like no matter who the man is, like they don't know how to be submissive to that man. Like I make more than you. I do, 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 you know, that sort of thing. And it can, it can, it can cause some friction with a relationship. And see, I can argue that because I feel like the right man is going to make the right woman want to be submissive. That's just the truth. Like if you are the right man for her, and you check off all the boxes. Y'all check off all the boxes for each other. There's She's no such thing as all boxes, well, though. Well, you know, eight out of ten of the boxes. Okay. Then she's going to want to be submissive. She's going to care about your day. She's going to care about if you ate. She's going to care about how your week is going, how work is going, a way that she can help you grow and be better in your life. Like, she's going to care. If you're not that man, you're not going to get that out of her. Like, you're not going to get that soft girl error. So you have to be the person that is supposed to be aligned with her. So if God didn't put you in her space to be that alignment, she's not going to be submissive to you. That's just how I feel. But like for me personally, I just, I don't feel like I'm in the mindset or the mind frame for any of that. Mm -hmm. So anybody that try to talk to me, I just be like, I'm going to have you punching walls because I'm not where you want me to be and mm -hmm. I'm not looking for a relationship. So if you're looking for a relationship and you think you're about to change me, I'm going to need you to exit stage left because you're not going to get any of that from over here. I have a question, another question, but um, with this question, um, if you don't want to answer it, we'll cut this part out, but I'm going to ask this part. Go ahead. Because I know that um, earlier you said that um, you scared of relationships, mm -hmm. right? But you being scared of relationships, um, cause I know you date girls. Yes, I do. Is that one you of the main? You don't have to cut that out because I mean I get fifty million questions. Yes, yes, oh, okay. I date females sometimes. But is that one of your main reasons for dating girls? Is because I don't want to deal with the guy thing, trying to grow a relationship with a guy. So this is my easy way of let me go play over here until I'm ready to. No, because there's actually been some girls that I really, really like. Like, I really, really, you know, tried to be in a relationship with. But I think, for me, it has been easier dating women because I carry a lot of masculine energy. And that's and when I say masculine energy, I just mean maybe I'm a little bossy, I'm a little assertive. And because within the business world, I've had to be dominant and really just call the shots and make shit shake, that when it comes to like talking to women, it's kind of like, oh, I already know what you want because I'm a woman. So you just want me to be nice to you and talk to you and tell you that you're cute and buy you flowers. That's easy. <laughs> so that's all women want? Most most of them. I, I mean, that was, that was me summing it up. That was me summing it so up. that's but, all you want? I mean, for, for most women, it's just like... No, you're a woman, so that's all you want from a man. That's not all I want, but I'm just saying like... I know I'm a woman, right. so I know what I want, and I know what most women want, and I know most of our characteristics. Mm -hmm. So it was just kind of easy. But then again, on the flip side, I understand what these men go through because these bitches be crazy. <laughs> so I'll be like, I mean, I don't know who's worse, men or women, because the women that I've actually talked to has had me pulling my hair out like, why, why, why am I doing this? Like, why? why? So it's just like, I don't know. I think sometimes it's easier for me to talk to women because I don't have to. I can still be myself and not have to dumb myself down because I know what the woman wants. But a lot of times with men, it's like they're trying to control me. Mm -hmm. They're trying to tell me what I want or how to do it or literally the conversation I told you about earlier. Like what, mm -hmm. what response did you want? Because I can tell you what you want me to tell you, but you don't want to hear what I want with what, what I'm telling you. Did you have that conversation with your kids and let them know that, hey, I, I do date? <sighs> no. So I did not. Um, I don't think my youngest knows because um, I hide it very well. I don't let my kids around anybody that I've talked to. Um, but I haven't really talked to anybody. And I feel like a lot of the people that I did try to talk to, they were kind of just like a, I didn't want to be by myself or alone, but I wanted to see if I could date. Or I wanted to see, you know, like what it was that I was missing from being married or understand that. Because I do feel like 
with me and my ex-husband being when we were separated we're divorced now um me kind of going through that transition it kind of made me look at him a little bit different but in a positive way Mm -hmm. to kind of understand like the boundaries that i didn't have the things that i wanted the things that I should have worked harder on. Yeah, so and you so, still see some of your faults that yeah, you could have done better in right. the, to make and it work. And he, he may not ever understand that, but I feel like those are things we had to kind of go through in order to be able to be friends now. And so, like, we were literally just at his one of his movie premieres. Mm-hmm. And we know a lot of, we're, we're a part of the same groups. Mm-hmm. So people were just like, Taylor's here. Oh, my God, Taylor's here. And I'm like, y'all ain't got to whisper. I hear you motherfuckers. But, um... <laughs> We were, me and him were joking. We were laughing. And people was just like, are you and Taylor going to get back together? And I just kept telling everybody, look, we're working on being friends. I don't know what the future holds, but we've been together since I was 19. I'm 32. He was 21 when I met him. And now he's 35. I'm like, y'all got to understand that people change drastically. And so for me, I think going through that phase and trying to figure those things out, it helped me realize a lot about myself. Like, I'm very nonchalant. Like, it's it's so bad that you would be like, I'm going to fight her. Because you could tell me, like, I don't like you. And I'm be like, oh, okay, was was I supposed to care? Mm. I was. Didn't. And move around. I want to touch on some current events. Um, uh, Megan and Nicki Minaj. <laughs> I, I need to hear your opinion on that situation. Um with the lens that is gone to, whereas people are trying, you know, they have to amp up security at the cemetery at where Megan's mom is buried because, you know, it's in fear of some of the fans, Nikki fans going and really, really defiling her mom's, you know, mm-hmm. grave because of the, the whole beef. What do you think about the whole situation? Okay. I don't even, why are they beefing? I mean, I've heard the raps the 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 I've heard that, but what is the why are they beefing? What 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 did Nikki do to Meg? Cause I feel like Meg beef with everybody, to be honest. I'm sorry, I'm not a Nikki or a Meg fan. Well, you know, all I can tell you is um, they mentioned Bun being Pimp C, mm-hmm. and uh, and it wasn't about them. That's all I care about. I, I you don't mention I'm, Bun. I'm not listening. Don't just, mention Pimp and. That I really can't really, I mean, I really can't get into uh, their, why they're beefing or why they're, they're two ladies and they, you know, um, both of them are very successful. I just, so I, just I really, like, like I said, we all can win. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, but Megan is from Texas. But I saw a post and, 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 and I'm just going to be honest with you. I, like I told Lil Kiki yesterday, you can't, you, certain niggas, certain people can't do no wrong. Not in the hood. You know, we can fight amongst each other, but I promise you this. But is this Tupac true? said we'll tear the roof off if you get us pissed. No, but. and die in L.A. Listen, you cannot. You can argue with you know how it is with family. You can argue with your sister. Yeah, but, but nobody somebody else, else come in here like, trying to. Hey, 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 hey! I'm mad mm-hmm. at her now, but nigga, I'll we will turn on you. Yeah. <laughs> but is this true that with rap, um, beef comes with rap? I agree with that. I agree. Well, I think it's a part. I think it's a part of like the promotion. Like that's that's you got you the think, battle so you rap. You think they doing that to promote? I, you think I, it's something they like playing? It, but at the but same it can time, go far. It take too far where yeah, people but it gets so personal. At the so same personal. time, I'm not gonna even lie. Like I don't keep up with Nikki and Meg like that. But some of the things that I have kept up with Meg, Meg can be a bully. But Nikki what? can too. Both of them can be a bully. They both be, they both right. beast mode. Right. But I feel like one for Nikki. I'm just like you talk about being the queen and on the throne. When she threw them jabs, you should have just looked down at her and be like, bitch, I was your inspiration. Move along. That's what she said that. She said that, you know, if it wasn't because of me, you wouldn't be where you are. Then she should know. She should have said that and not made. I ain't gonna even lie. That rap that she made, she had a few punch bars that I was like, oh, not the Tory and the, and the all them people. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't that good. But Meg made the um, comments before talking about um, Nikki's husband and all of the stuff that he'd be going through. But I mean, that's not nothing new. People have been talking about her husband since forever. So why? Tory Tory stuff isn't new either. Right. So it's just like, why why even bring, like, she's here. Nikki is here. Megan is trying to be where Nikki was. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you already know people are saying that. I don't agree with that. Why? I think think Meg's coming across a lot. Coming up just fine. She's doing just fine. But uh, Nikki, when she first came in the game, 
I kind of remember her. She the way she handled Lil Kim. Yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying. So it's just the same thing go around like a hula hoop. I mean, I can see that when people change these positions and other people get the limelight now, and it's not as much of a Nikki uh, show as it was at first. It was a very at first there was nothing but Nikki. Now you got True. all these people. You got because I love Lotto. Lotto. Lot, yeah, Lotto, love Lotto. You got Lotto. Ice Spice is trash. You're a Lotto. About the you same don't color. like Ice Spice. Yeah, I don't like Ice Spice, but I love uh, Lotto. You got Lotto. You got a uh, sexy Lotto red. You got, so you sexy love... red is trash. What? what? <laughs> what? Yes, she's what, trash. What about a uh, uh, Glorilla? Glo- she grew on me. <laughs> she cool. Like she real. Like but. Ice Spice, Sexy Red, they trash. Why like, don't you like what about Ice Spice? Scar- Wait a minute, what she about, can't rap. What about Scarlip? You heard her? I heard of Scarlip, but I ain't never really listened to her stuff. <laughs> she real New York, man. Yeah, I ain't never really listened and to she, her she And she, she, she's out there showing that body today. So it's not because yeah. of their personalities, it's because of their music you don't Their like music, them. yeah. Like, I'm a, I'm a lyrical person. Anybody knows me, they know I'm like the character. Oh, you spit box. bars? No, not that. <laughs> I spit other people bars. I repeat them. <laughs> You be in the car. I, re- I repeat you're in the, the car with I have, I have car concerts. Like everybody knows that. Like me and karaoke. What's we your like favorite this. bar? Hmm. Give me a bit. I want to hear it. Bar. My favorite. Okay, so so. I guess this is. I guess this would be a rap. But T Pain's song uh, off of his Epiphany album. Um. What's the name of the song? Um, Go ahead and spit the bar. I want you to hear you spit. Why you always trying to make somebody spit? She don't even rap. She said she do car rap. concerts, so I want to hear I what she do rap. in her car. Um, you know what? If I did you like that, you wouldn't do <laughs> right, nothing. I don't rap at you all. Sure all I wouldn't know the words. Um, It's off the epiphany out. Okay, it go like... What's it? Okay, how it start? Oh, I'm nervous. I, hold on. <laughs> it say... um, What is it? Now you know. The go... Some, 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 some. He was like, baby girl, let me teach you to do this so I can touch you how I want to. Oh, and make love to you how the lame niggas won't do. Go on, girl, what you going to do? I'm a nappy head. You can put my nappy dreads if you want to. Shawty, I'm going to put it on you. Oh, you and got it. Oh, girl, wait I'm singing on my songs, too. Hold on. This is the fast part. You got me thinking that me and you and the drinking and the sipping and the patroni. Who would have been the guy that got it on? Ooh, that's my song, y'all. Like, that's my song. That's my song. Like, that one. And then, um, I love, like, Lotto. I, Lotto and Cardi B are two of the people that I've watched like from the bottom come up I remember watching Cardi B on Love and Hip Hop mm-hmm. and she was basically telling everybody you don't gotta support me now but you gonna be watching me later and she did everything that she said so those two even Lotto she was on uh, what is it Rap Game mm-hmm. with Jermaine Dupri she go hard she go hard like her raps go hard I literally almost fainted when I met her in person and I was just like, she was like, girl, you look cute. I said, me? I look cute? Me? Girl, you just don't know that I like girls sometimes. You better stop. Wow. <laughs> wow. You better stop it. Don't do that. Don't do that, Alyssa. Don't do that. Wow, so, that's crazy. But yeah, like, I'm a lyrical person. Like, I like to listen to the words. Like, the beat is cool, but I like to hear what you're talking about. And I don't feel like Ice, Ice Spice don't be talking about nothing. Sexy Red, all she talk about is six. That's mm-hmm. it. That's all she talk about. And I'm like, girl, at this point, your pussy need a it need a price tag. Just put it on there. Like, <laughs> as much as you talk about it, it's no. But like Meg, Meg is cool. She tells stories. I love Cash Doll. Cash Doll is a very story type person when she rap. Um, I now Sweetie, Sweetie is good. But there's one song, um, Sweetie Have, that I will always, that will always be my theme song. It's called Icy Girl. Mm. What people don't realize is that that whole song is a manifestation. Of your and life. She, no, it's just period. She say, can't stop, won't stop, get guap. Ten white toes and them toy flip flops. Medicures and pedicures, I'm always tip top. Some, 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 some. Um, what'd she say? Um, there was a specific, a specific, if you go listen to the song, the entire song, it's just manifesting. Mm-hmm. And she was like, um, she she say something like, never had an RIP shirt. Um, I'm trying to put money like in the bank and not on bags. Pretty much like, I don't need the weed. I'm trying to invest it. Like be on a beach and invest in my money. Right. And that's the whole song. And I remember listening to that song before it made mainstream. And people was like, why you keep listening to this song? I said, listen to the words. That's real. Listen to the words. The words are literally telling you what she wants out of life. And she got it. Like that's that will forever be my theme song. It's called Ice Girl. Wow, man! Listen, man. Thank you for coming on the show. 
I got to wrap it up because mm -hmm. we got to get you over there too. But anyway, um, how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok at I am, I A M, Taylor Simone. Um, let me see. My email is I am Taylor Simone at gmail.com. Um, you can go to my website, www.taylorsimone.com. If you want to come to the spa, it's tnsmedspa.com. All the information is on there. Um, if you have business that you would like to talk to me about or book me for something, you can call or text this number, 470-952-3964. They could have blow it up. No, I ain't going to answer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Only text. Yeah, wow. they can call it, they can text it. I'm going to just look at the phone ring and be like, mm, if it's important, they'll, they'll leave a they'll text leave a message. Text. Or they'll leave a voicemail. No, nah, like, you have to do that. Everybody get my business line. That's I, right. I got one last question, and this part is because, you know, everybody look at you as a businesswoman. Everybody look at you as touching skin or mm -hmm. TNS Med Spa or so forth, and they, they put you on this pedestal. But I know you I be it. modeling, and you be wanting to be ratchet sometime, and you, you want to be all, you know, Tell me about, because this Taylor Simone is supposed to be like your alter ego. Tell me about who this Taylor Simone and how ratchet can this Taylor Simone get? Oh, it gets ratchet sometimes. Um, okay, so I have a word. I like to tell people I'm sophisticated ratchet, but I'm also 32. I'm still loading. So I'm not going to stop living my life because other people have these expectations of me. I'm still meeting the expectations that they have. I'm just doing it in my own way. And one thing that I real I feel like people follow me for is my transparency and my authenticity. Like I'm showing you how to make your dreams happen, how to be a boss, how to do everything that you want to do out of life and still be true to yourself. And I think that's why people fool with me. That's why people like being around with me because I'm not pretending to be somebody else. And so sometimes it do get a little ratchet. Like I do like going outside. I do like sitting in the car and listening to my rap songs with my windows down and blasting my music and throwing up the imaginary gang songs that I think I'm a part of. <laughs> I like that. Like, I have fun with that. Like, I like I like being able to be me. I mean, I have 50 million tattoos. I have blonde locks. Like, I like being able to be me. And I think for people who are trying to be, like, in the entrepreneur world or run businesses, it's comforting to them because they they're like, look, she did it. She made it. My company hit over a million dollars already. Like and I did that being myself. I can go into the whitest of the white rooms or the hoodest of the hood rooms and they still gonna love me because I'm gonna be the same person in whatever room that I'm in. And I'm gonna be able to branch the two because they trust me and they trust my opinion and all that other stuff. So they're gonna be like, yeah, come on, let's let's do it. So I, I, I don't have a problem. Like I don't have problems with that. Because I always show up as me. And I think people appreciate that. Wow. Thank you so much, Taylor, man. We love you over here at Boss Hog 101. And uh, I want to try to get you on here um, quarterly this year. What's up? So I'm ready. Know, I mean, I want to bring you into this world. So people can really understand the way that the business is going and developing. And we definitely going to have you back on the show if you'll come. Yeah, duh. I'm always be here. Man. Can't, you can't get rid of me. Man. Check it, man. Hey, man. Listen, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talk. Hey.